Lipsky and I'm going to show you how to create a droplet. Um, the reason I use droplets is because it is awesome with workflow. It helps you work a lot faster. I shoot in RAW, I call in Photo Mechanic, I basic edit in Lightroom, and then I export using droplets, which exports them into Photoshop, runs in action, saves, and closes them. It is something that has saved me tons of time and has allowed me with my, well I'm expecting more, my fourth child to have a lot more time to be a mom, clean the house, take a break, relax, go out to lunch, do whatever I need to do. And I want to say thanks to Amy Cart Photography who let me know about droplets and without you Amy I would be bogged down every day so thank you. I also want to thank my awesome assistants who help me edit all the time and we've been able to really get our sessions back to clients within a few days after their session which has been amazing. So in order to create a droplet you have to create an action that has save and close built into it. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to create an action over here in my actions palette. I'm going to name it droplet awesomeness. And I'm using uh, Michelle Kane's Creative Heart Set. I love Michelle Kane. Her actions are wonderful. They're easy to use. They're easy to tweak. And I use them 90% of the time. So if not more, it's more like 99%. So here I'm going to go and play one of my favorite actions, which is Daydream and Warmth. I have created using her actions. I also have built in one of my... Noiseware plugins, which is called Imaginomic Noiseware, and it adds a very beautiful smoothing. Just make sure to not overdo it because your clients can look waxy and fake. And goodness knows we don't want to look too fake in a photo. We want to be cleaned up and polished, but we don't want to look bad. So I always make sure my actions are built within a group so that you can easily tweak the layers and opacities and make sure that it's not too overdone so that everybody looks really natural. You can see if I bring my group layer up a lot, it will be kind of too much and, and they may look like an Oompa Loompa. I'm also going to bring Daydream up a little bit to cool the action off a little bit so that it's not too red. So once I'm done making sure all of my layers are exactly the way I want, I'm going to flatten my image. You need to flatten it by going to Layer and flatten and I have built this into one of my shortcut keys and I build it into a lot of my actions that are nice and subtle that I can just then save and close. Now make sure to hit Apple S or I'm not sure what it is on a PC but you just want to save it, hit OK and then file. Where's close? I never go to a file. I'm sorry I always use Apple W. Here we go. <laughs> I always use my shortcut keys. So once your action, if you can see, it, here's my entire action, and then it goes flatten, save, and close. Once you're done, please push stop. If you don't push stop, it's going to keep recording everything you do in Photoshop. So go ahead and push stop. Now let's create a droplet. Go to File, Automate, and Create Droplet. I'm going to choose the folder. I'm going to name it Awesome Droplet. It's already in there because I was doing it earlier. Awesome Droplet. Hit Save. And since I have Save and Close built into the action, I don't need to worry about anything else. Basically, the set is where your action is in which set. And there's the actual action, Droplet Awesomeness. Hit OK. So your droplet is now saved. Mine is saved to my desktop so I can find it quickly and easily. Something else I always recommend doing is once you are finished recording a brand new action, go ahead and close out Photoshop because nine times out of ten, if you don't close it out for a long time, something will happen, it will flub up, it will crash, and then your entire action that you recorded will be gone. It will not save it. So hit quit for Photoshop, and I'm going to go into Lightroom. Here is Lightroom. So I, I wanted to show, I get a lot of questions on how I edit in Lightroom. This is Laurie and Darren's wedding from last year, a wedding I just adore. It was perfect and they're wonderful clients and now friends. So we're going to go to develop and 
I have created a basic preset for my photos. Um, I can tell it's going to be not quite what I want. So I'm going to hit my basic preset. And you'll be able to see everything that it does. I'm sorry, my computer's taking longer than it should. Okay, so you can see over here everything that I do in Lightroom for the most part. I think it's a little too contrasty. So I'm going to bring up, I don't know if that's a word anyway, contrasty. It's my new word. I'm going to bring up shadows over here a little bit. Something I always do is bring my luminance for my red and orange up. It always helps skin tones be nice and even without being too orange or red. And I always come down here and add a little bit of noise reduction. Something else I do is enable profile corrections. You can see how my lens adds a vignette, vignette, whatever you want to call it. So I just enable it so it lightens up the edges a little bit. And I am going to sync this with all of my photos in this set. And it's going to be, I'm going to have to tweak some of them. But others are going to look just exactly the way I want. So I'm going to go through and figure out everything looks pretty good. I may have to tweak some exposure here and there if I wasn't exposing it properly. Um... Or I may need to adjust some of the white balance because of whatever reason. Here we go. Oh, I just saw the wheel of death. See it? There it is. Okay. So this guy needs to be brought up just a little bit. And um, I'm just going to go through and do a few more. And I'm going to show you how to incorporate the droplet. Get Lari, isn't she precious? Um, so this one I can tell uh, focus is not quite on her face. I'm going to bring up the focus or the sharpening just a little bit. Right up here, just a little. You have to be careful because sometimes you can overdo it without even realizing it. And once you export it and you see it in Bridge or a folder, you can see how, how it could be too sharp. Um, on images like this, I typically like to bring my vibrance down. There's no need to bring too much color in. Sometimes it'll make their faces too orange. Okay, and I'm going to sync these two. Let's see what I'm doing. And I have the worst habit with shooting crooked. So, I shoot crooked all the time. I'm not sure why. It's awful, and I think my assistants hate me for it because they have to straighten images more than they have to do anything else. And I love the tool in here for straightening. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export these. So I'm going to select just these. I'm going to hit File. I'm going to hit Export. So I'm just going to keep these. Um, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to put it in a subfolder under my pictures. This is how I do it. I know I'm probably not the most organized with how my photos are. And I'm going to call this Laurie Darren, excuse me, wedding shape. And I'm going to scroll down. Here's all my settings. Typically I do long edge 18 or 12, one or the other. And then, now we're going to go to the export. So here, you see that I have a droplet already chosen. I'm going to go to Go to Export Actions folder now. And what you do is you take your droplet right here in this folder. And you're going to drag it into the Export Actions folder that's, that is pulled up whenever you hit that um, button in excuse me, in Lightroom. So I'm done. I dragged it in there. I'm going to X out. And once you click this, you should see it in there. There it is. Awesome droplet. Awesomeness. So I've got my 12 inch long edge. I've got my awesome droplet chosen. I've got my folder. My quality is 90. I want it to go to a JPEG. So I do not have JPEGs until I export Lightroom. Otherwise it's typically raw. You can 
rename the files. You can do whatever you want. This is just how I'm going to do it to show you how. So I hit export. So you're going to see up here that it is exporting my nine files. And this is probably going to take forever because I'm recording a video and it'll probably act up. So I'll kind of talk about some stuff. So it's going to export each of the nine files. Once it is done exporting, it will open up Photoshop and pull in each uh, file into Photoshop, run that action that I just made, the awesome droplet, save it and close it into a new folder. So basically what I've done is I've just Lightroomed and Photoshopped nine photos within seconds. Obviously, it took me a little bit longer to show you guys, but I can do a portrait session, I don't know, in maybe 30 minutes. I've got my Lightrooming down, and then once you export, it's pulled up into Photoshop, and the action is run on it. So just make sure your actions are nice and subtle. I will create new actions depending on how the session is or where the session is or kind of what mood I'm feeling and create a new droplet but you saw how easy and quick it was I have probably eight droplets now I don't know maybe less than that um, but I only started using these in the fall so it's almost finished and I'm a huge supporter of Lightroom and a huge supporter of Photoshop I do not believe that one is better than the other. I use them as a team and it's been very successful for my post-processing, for my final image, my final finer photo. And I think that without um, Photoshop, I wouldn't be able to retouch. So here you can see my Photoshop is opening and it's about to run every image with the action. I'll kind of show you how that does it. So here it is. You can see over here it's working. And it should save it and close it. It's not as quick because I have not complicated actions, they just have a lot of steps. So the other thing I'm going to do while this is running, I'm going to open up Bridge. I always view my photos in Bridge. I'm going to go to my Pictures folder, which is where the images are being saved. And I'm going to click and make sure that the action or the droplet was run on every file. And I can tell that these are not exactly the way they were in Lightroom. So you can see there's just a nice subtle uh, pop from Photoshop. So here is what it looked like in Lightroom. And here's what it looks like excuse me, after I have run the droplet. So you can kind of see, excuse me, from Lightroom. And that's nice and warm. Some people would say that that's enough. I do a little bit extra, a little bit more editing. And um, that's exactly how it's done. So you can see that all of those were run through Lightroom and Photoshop pretty quickly. The only thing I would maybe want to do is uh, convert some to black and white, do some retouching, um, any kind of fine tuning that I would need to do. All of these to me look great. Of course I would, would love to do it in black and white as well, which you could also create a droplet for and rename those when you're exporting them. So I hope you have learned something. Just remember that in order to create a droplet you must have an action Maybe you don't actually, I have no idea. But I use save and close, build within my action so that once the action is run through the droplet, it saves it and closes it. And voila, your images will be edited. Thanks so much.